You have to sort of accept um, who you are and how you show up in the world and recognize what your strengths are. Um, you know, for a long time when I was growing up, I had those same kind of feelings of like, you know, if somebody said I can't, I internalized it. And I said, you know what, maybe they're right. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, is that people are going to take your shoulders and point you left or take your shoulders and point you right. But you've got to kind of take your own shoulders and point yourself in the direction you feel most comfortable in, what you want to do, what makes you feel good, and then get good at it. Welcome to the Epic Ally podcast, where we discuss all things accessibility and disability related. This episode was actually an interview I recorded back in August of this year, 2023, with an amazing woman, Lachi, who is an artist, who is an author now, and an amazing advocate. At that time, she had just released a song called Lift Me Up with an accompanying music video that had ASL, and it was in honor of Judy Human's life. I was hoping to have shared this interview alongside the release of that, but it has been a couple months now, and I just went back and listened through the interview, and I thought that it was still valuable, and I wanted to share it with you guys. We did talk about the song and all the different disabled artists that were part of this project, but we talked about other things as well, about accepting our blindness and using assistive technology, keyboard shortcuts, and a lot of other things as well, including a few fun little blind stories. Even though it's been a couple of months now, I hope you go and listen to the song Lift Me Up, and I hope you enjoy this interview. I'll meet you on the other side. All right, so tell us who you are and what you do. Who I am and what I do. So I am Lachi, she, her. I'm a black woman with cornrows. Right now I'm in New York, land of the Lenape people. I'm in my home studio with my piano behind me, I think. And I am just chilling, hanging out with you. Who I am, I am a recording artist, a songwriter, and I am a disability uh, inclusion and culture advocate. I don't know, there's just like, what is advocate and what is activist, right? Um, I am the founder and president of Recording Artists and Music Professionals with Disabilities, that is RAMPED, R-A-M-P-D.org, and we're the platform connecting the music industry um, to music professionals with disabilities, neurodivergence, mental health conditions, uh, chronic illness, and the like. I am also a Grammys board member, and I serve on several music industry boards to help talk about and discuss disability inclusion and accessibility sort of at the highest levels within the music industry. Um, and then I am also a keynote speaker, I guess, because I run around keynote speaking at places um, about disability culture in the workplace or about disability culture around town. Um, I am also just your best friend. Um, I'm in your backyard right now, waving at you awkwardly. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Oh my goodness. Uh, from from working with you just a little bit um, in the past, I, I think you are absolutely amazing. I love your thoughts and um, just the experience that you share. Uh, but I really want to talk about your recent release, Lift Me Up, and tell us all about it. So Lift Me Up is such a interesting story. So a lot of people ask me why I uh, sort of um, use that song as a designation and sort of an uplift for Judy Human. Um, it's because I knew Judy personally. I mean, she was a world leader, a world shifter. Um, and But at the end of the day, I really valued our personal friendship. And I really wanted a female role model in my life that kind of got what I was doing. And she filled that void. Uh, she'd call me up in the morning at weird hours. Um, it would be fine. Whatever time zone she was in, I don't know what it is, but she would always call me at like 2 a.m. and stuff like that. And then make me sing for her friends. Um, so I we had a really fun, close relationship. And when she passed away, it was very difficult for me. Uh, I didn't really know how to cope um, until I started writing a song. And, you know, I, I just, I didn't know that I was finally crying for the first time. Um, until I started writing the song and I could feel my own teardrops on my fingers. And I'm like, wow, I really needed this outlet to understand how to grieve for my friend. Mm -hmm. um, 
The funny thing about it is, is that my friend James Ian, we decided to start co-writing together. He was also a good friend of hers and he also has a disability. So I identify as blind. He has um, SMA, which is spinal muscular atrophy. And he's also a very skilled musician. Galen Lee jumped on. She has brittle bone syndrome. She's also a touring musician. April Rose jumped on. She has a disability. Q Lick jumped on to do some mastering. He's actually half deaf and he's a, like a mastering engineer who's done stuff with Sony. So I'm like, oh, okay, girl. Um, and so we're all like ramped members and we all started coming together, writing this like amazing song. And then somebody was like, this song is bigger than us. We need to also have a music video. Um, and so I had this idea where it was like, you know, when we, when we discuss disability culture, cause this is such, it was such a disability culture story already, right? All of these mm -hmm. artists with disabilities coming together to write this song, to uplift Judy and to write like a good song, right? Like not like a Judy, we miss you. Da da da. It was like, let's write like a real song. Cause we're all real artists. And someone was like, well then make a real music video. So we were like, okay, so how do we want to do this? And we were like, let's salute um, lifting up something that isn't quite lifted up enough. And we figured that like ASL is always in a box in the corner, right? Why don't we flip the script and have us in the background and have our song and our words interpreted in the front. Um, and that's how the idea of the music video came around. Um, and that's what it is now. We have um, a couple of TikTok viral stars, um, Otis Jones, Nell Russell, and Amber Galloway, um, doing the sign language performance of our song. And they are front and center while we're projected in the background. And it was um, produced and directed uh, by Kat Rubinus Stevens, who's done a lot of the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge and won. Um, and Day Al Muhammad, who's actually a blind filmmaker, I've worked with her on a few things. She's worked at the White House. Uh, and when she, she she stopped working at the White House and while she was walking out of the White House, I ran up to her and I said, I have your next project. Um, <laughs> and so this was just such a beautiful community effort. Everyone did it for like the love of Judy um, and the uplift of disability culture. And I have to say, when we got into that, first of all, when I first wrote this song, I had no intention or even idea how much it would blow up. Um, when we were recording the song as musicians and when we were recording it as video folk, I guess, we still had no idea how it was going to blow up. We were just doing it for the love and we were coping with our loss for Judy. We were celebrating our disability identities so many different ways of communication were happening in that room with the sign language and with blind folk everywhere. I mean, it was beautiful. <laughs> and then the song came out uh, and there was like such a downpour of love from the community, just celebrating Judy, celebrating disability, celebrating cross pan disability culture. Um, and when we got the support from folks like Google and MTV, and we got the big Hollywood Reporter article, these were things we were not expecting. Um, but even this this outpour and support from the community was just like amazing. And it's still happening. I mean, the video is still growing. I think we're about to hit 100K views um, on YouTube. We hit over a million views on TikTok. We hit 700,000 views on Instagram. It's like, and all of the comments are beautiful. And then the support from Coldplay. So Coldplay came in and was like, we like this song. And I said, oh my God, you know, I exist. Um, so uh, it's just been such beauty, beauty. And like, I'm trying to, like not to tear up, even just thinking about how beautiful the song came together and how beautifully uh, the community came together behind the song. So. That's absolutely amazing. I only met Judy once and uh, she invited me to be on her podcast uh, along okay. with a uh, f another Fable colleague of mine. Sure. And I... <laughs> When I was getting ready for this interview, I just I kind of just tend to go to my closet and just like, oh, I'm just going to pick this random shirt. And then once I put it on, I was like, this is the same shirt that I wore um, to Judy's podcast. <laughs> I'm telling you, girl, it's all connected. I, I literally did not do that on purpose. I was just like, oh, well, OK, this is great. Judy did it. Judy picked out your outfit. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just feel really sad that I didn't get to meet her very well. Like I didn't 
get to form such a deep connection as you did. And I, mm -hmm. I think that's absolutely amazing. She was such an amazing person and she did so much for our community. But even without knowing her and knowing what she, all the things that she has done, um, I, I loved the song. And even if people don't know who it is and who, who it's in honor of, I think it's an amazing, phenomenal song. And I just love it. I played it like over and over. I'm like, wow, I really love this. <laughs> awesome. So I'm well, going to fangirl know, it up a little bit in here. <laughs> well, you, know, you know what? That was part of it too, right? We wanted to make sure that not only did we have everyone or at least the majority of folks involved be um, diverse folks within the disability community. And by diverse, I mean, different types of disabilities. I mean, even our cover art um, was done um, by Genevieve Ramos, who also has a disability, who I randomly met at an Access Living Gala that was celebrating <laughs> Judy. We wanted to make sure that we had a high quality product, mm -hmm. whether it be the song so that someone hears it on the radio and goes, whoa, this is just a really good song. Um, or whether someone checks out the video and goes, you know, gets blown away by the beautiful piece of art we made. Even if you don't know Judy, even if you don't know anything about disability or disability culture, and even if you just turn on the song and maybe it reminds you of just a friend, right? Um, that's what we wanted to make sure we did because that's the only way we're going to really start penetrating um, like disability awareness, disability culture to the mainstream sort of major market every man, right? If we are able to put out competitive art um, that's undeniable, that's how we get those conversations started in the mainstream, at least through our sort of creative lane. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I, I in the community, in the especially in the blind community, I, I feel that there are a lot of people still that think that because they're blind, um, they won't be able to succeed and it just shows how many people have have a disability and you are an example of how no matter what kind of disability you have you can still do whatever you want with your life yeah i think part of it too is you know you have to sort of accept um who you are and how you show up in the world and recognize what your strengths are mm -hmm. um you know, for a long time when I was growing up, I had those same kind of feelings of like, you know, if somebody said I can't, I internalized it. And I mm -hmm. said, you know what, maybe they're right. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, is that people are going to take your shoulders and point you left or take your shoulders and point you right. But you've got to kind of take your own shoulders and point yourself in the direction you feel most comfortable in, what you want to do, what makes you feel good, and then get good at it. So a lot of folks, I feel like in the disability community often try to cut corners, right? Because you figure, oh, well, I have a disability. Let me try to cut corners to try to keep up. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, well, while you're cutting those corners, um, find something you love and are passionate about and get good at it. Like I decided I want to get good at music. Mm -hmm. I want to be just as good as my non-disabled counterparts so that when I put stuff out and so that I can, I could, I could hear it uh in the same radio station as my idols right because mm -hmm. if i just try to put out whatever then people will maybe they'll support me but it'll be because oh she's blind bless her heart what an mm. inspiration i am so charitable right exactly and i want to be like you know what no i'm good at music i studied music and i am going to put out art that is going to blow your mind mm -hmm. whether you know that i'm blind or not mm -hmm. Definitely. What was your vision and what is your message through the song? So my real message is about community, um, about lifting each other up. Um, when I first started writing the song, I obviously I was sort of grieving for Judy and trying to cope with that. Um, but I think that what I was really missing was that mentorship that she gave me. Right. Like I could call her at any time and I could be crying. I could be and she would cry with me. I could be laughing and she would laugh with me. She'd give me great advice and she would always connect me with whoever I needed connecting with. I called her. She called herself an extrovert. I called my her a connectrovert because she <laughs> would always be connecting people. And that was what I was so sad that I was losing was like that 
just open willingness to open up your network, open up opportunity, connect people with each other, be there for someone. Um, and that's like really rare in a lot of sort of historically excluded communities, right? Everyone's just trying to get what they can, right? Mm -hmm. And there's not so much lifting each other up. Um, and that's what I was so afraid was going to be gone. And it was funny because as I spoke to other people about this project, that's what they were saying too, right? They were like, oh, well, now that Judy's gone, it's over. Like no one's going to be that great connector. No one's going to be that great whatever. And I wanted to connect as many people as possible through this project. I wanted to have this message of lifting each other up, of this connectivity that she really introduced into the disability community, um, into other diverse communities. Um, that's really what this message is about. It's about lifting each other up and connecting with each other, about community, about breaking down these silos and recognizing that, um, we all have a voice. We all have something to say. And the only way we can be heard is if we all come together, speak and listen. So that's really what this song is about. Um, and I'm really, really, really excited for, for the co-artists that I worked with, for the team that I worked with, um, for the support that came from the community. I think it really showed um, that other folks have really been waiting for this message um, and to be a part of this movement. I love it. Where can they listen to the song? Uh, honestly, if you just Google lift me up Lachi, you're going to find it, but it's on, <laughs> it's on Spotify. It's on iTunes. You can find the music video on YouTube and everywhere else. Like we have been pushing it very, very hard, but it's called lift me up. It's by Lachi and James Ian featuring Galen Lee. So now I want to go back to, uh, how you create music as somebody with a disability. How, how do you do it? What kind of tools do you use? Uh, what um, accommodations, what assistive technology do you personally use? Um, that's really interesting because I myself, so I am low vision, right? Partially sighted. And I had much better vision when I was much younger. Um, and so as many folks that are in that situation know, it's a very gradual process to move into um, adaptive technology and um, assistive accessibility add-ons and things like that. For me, um, the two things I do is I use Pro Tools as my sort of digital audio workstation that I record in and that I sort of write music on. And the, the beauty um, of Pro Tools, it's, it's got a really low learning curve. It's relatively accessible. Um, got some great tools that tie in um, at least with the situation that I use. So I use a combination of Zoom text and some screen reading. And the beauty of it is, is that it works really well with screen reading and it also has a ton of keyboard shortcuts. So we love uh, keyboard shortcuts. Uh -huh. Exactly. So <laughs> I just keyboard and it's so funny because I'll have uh, people come to my studio and I just tell them straight up, like when I have a guest, right? I'll say, like, listen, I'm legally blind, so but you'll be fine. And they're like, okay. <laughs> um, and then they they see me working and they're like, holy crap, you didn't even look down. And I'm like, yeah, because I'm blind. I can't look. What are you talking? So, um, uh, but I love that as well. And then I've, other than that, I just play uh, the piano. Sometimes I'll, I'll have my phone out and I'll just kind of sing something that has come to my mind and uh, record it onto myself and the piano and then switch it over to my digital audio workstation. My recorder is definitely my buddy. Uh, I'll have like an idea on the train or someone will sniff or fart or smell weird and then I'll have an idea and I'll just sing it. And honestly, look, I'm in New York, so I don't care if people stare at me because I'm singing into my phone, whatever, I'm working. Okay, so that's what this is. Um, and, you know, another thing that I uh, do often is uh, the, when I when I do a lot of collaboration, like if we think about the fact that COVID um, has come and really normalized um, virtual discussions such as this one, mm -hmm. um, it has made the ability to collaborate with um, just like huge artists that I would have never thought, like our schedules have, would have never worked. Our management would have never been able to meet if virtual discussion wasn't so like normalized. Um, and so that has allowed me to do tons more collaborations, tons more gigs uh, because they're virtual gigs. Um, and I, I consider like this new open world of like this hybrid world that includes virtualness uh, and accessibility boon. So those are 
some of my things. But I will, I do want to mention one thing, actually. So very recently I wrote, I did a project um, at NYU, um, really kind of honing in on the accessibility of uh, the recording industry and recording technology for producers and um, engineers with vision loss. And basically I asked, um, uh, I had a big survey, talked to about 60, 63, I believe, um, blind folks who work in the music industry um, about how they navigate in the studio, how they navigate online, um, how they navigate in their digital audio workspace, how they network, all of the different sort of things that you do in the music space. Um, and of course, uh, the the stats that came out were stats that you would imagine. Um, mm. Difficult to get gigs, difficult to network, you know, 60% have issues um, finishing a project because of accessibility um, shortcomings. But there was one stat that I thought that was really interesting that I wanted to share, which was, it turns out that blind folks, um, blind, I guess, producers and engineers have an easier time navigating basic functions in their digital audio workspace. So like play, stop, record, stop, you know, those kind of things, the very simple work functions. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually easier for blind folks because they use keyboard shortcuts. Mm -hmm. And it's more <laughs> difficult for non-blind users because they use um, on-screen navigation and this is the kind of thing that we want to be talking to manufacturers of, you know, these digital audio workspaces. We want to say, like, look, put more focus onto your keyboard shortcuts. Absolutely. Uh, we cannot get enough of keyboard shortcuts. Yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> it's easier for us and we're blind. Like it's easier for us. So like maybe it'll be better for your product, period, um, to do that and, and integrate it more. So I just wanted to toss that out because actually that paper just got accepted to the Audio Engineering Society. So I will actually be presenting it to some of the highest folks in um, the music and audio engineering space in October. So I was like, oh, well, I guess they care too. <laughs> Even if you're not blind, keyboard shortcuts are amazing. And then if you are, they are essential. <laughs> I agree with that. That is a definite. That's a definite. Tell us a little bit about networking what kind of barriers do you face when you network these days i mean i am very much i just walk in i'm flamboyant i'm having a good time but it did take a while to get to that point right mm -hmm. you know i would first firstly you know when i was when i was early diagnosed i was told that i probably should use a cane right when i was a kid mm -hmm. um and i was like oh it's already hard enough to just try to fit in. So I didn't want to add a cane to ostracizing myself, right? Mm -hmm. The only problem was is that that actually, it, I mean, I did need one. <laughs> 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 and so, you know, I just avoided it. And the problem was the stigma of the cane, right? Um, and as I started rising through the ranks in the music industry, um, not coming out about my blindness and trying to downplay it and trying to hide it as much as I could actually was to my detriment, even though it was in a way to my benefit, right? Because I was just getting in rooms and people were just caring about the music, music first, but networking wise and really trying to get above the hump and become truly competitive. Mm -hmm. I was shooting myself in the foot because a, I was missing you know, deal making handshakes um, mm. in the studios. I was like tripping over wires or, you know, the engineer would have the computer display up and say like, hey, do you want me to cut here or here? And I would just be like, yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden the whole song is deleted and I, and apparently I said yes to that. So, um, but when I finally was like, you know what? I can't keep wallflowering. I can't go to a network. I had the gumption to go to the networking event and then I would just have to wallflower because I couldn't get off the ground in that sense. Not only because I couldn't physically navigate, but I couldn't socially and emotionally navigate because I was just too afraid, right? Um, and then I came out about my disability. I stood in front of it. This happened probably more around 20, like 18 ish. Hmm. Um, I got in front of my, and you know, like before that I started really, I started talking about it and accepting it more, but it wasn't until really 2018 that I really started getting in front front. 
Um, and I started going to networking events and being like, hello, um, I'm legally blind or uh, I have low vision. Um, this is why I'm saying hello to you for the third time because I don't, <laughs> I don't, can't see. And it was a conversation too. <laughs> all the time, <laughs> all the time. But you know what really was the kicker? What did it for me? And this is why I started off the story about the cane thing is when I started, I mean, a lot of people who know me know me for my glam canes um, and makeup. And then they'll be like, oh, you do music too? And I'm like, that's what I want you to know me for. Um, <laughs> but So I'll glam up my canes and they'll be decked with jewels and they'll be, you know, rhinestones and glitter and all of that. And they match all my outfits and all of that. And when I walk into a networking place, A, everybody already knows I'm blind, right? Because it's just there. Uh, mm -hmm. B, you know, people come to me, right? So I don't miss a deal making handshake because if they try to wave at me or hit, shake my hand, I, they know that I can't see them. <laughs> so like, hopefully, they have to, yeah, they, they should. Have to. No. <laughs> exactly. And it's a conversation starter. It's like, oh, wow, that is such a cool, like, can I call it a, do I call it a cane? Or do I, like, you know, it starts a conversation. And now I am, it's a, it's a disarm, right? We're all disarmed. We're all talking. And it's like, you know, so what do you do? Well, I'm a singer. I'm a this. I'm a that. Check me out. I was on Forbes and Good Morning America. And they're like, wait, really? And I'm like, yes, really? And they're like, I'm going to look it up right in front of your face. And I'm like, okay, go for it. So it, the stigma of the cane kept me from using the cane because I was afraid of the social stigma. Mm -hmm. But now that I use the cane to weld my own social, I don't know, prowess, um, it is the best thing that I have ever done. Yes, I recently heard somebody say, and I've stolen this um, saying, is do you want to look like an incompetent sighted person or do you want to look like a competent blind person? <laughs> and I just love that. <laughs> there it is. That's the truth, though, because can I tell you something that just happened the other day? Mm -hmm. um, so this woman comes up to me. And so I hold my phone like really close to my face, right? Yeah. And I was just like standing on the corner doing something, waiting for somebody, waiting for a friend that was in a store. Um, she comes up to me and she's like, excuse me, miss, excuse me, miss. And I'm a New Yorker, so I just completely ignored her. I was like, mm, if she's yeah, definitely. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but she kept saying it. So I like turn and I start going to the, to the store. I go into the store. She goes into the <laughs> store. What is this? this was yesterday. I'm not even making this up. I wish I was. Um, she goes into the store. She's like, miss. Finally, I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, I noticed you had your phone really close to your face. Um, do you need glasses? Because I know someone who can help with that. Oh, my goodness. Are I you serious? Like, I said, look. So, oh. so and that, you know how like you always wish you had done, you, you know how you're ever in a situation and then you leave and you're like, God, if I had just this and that. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm never going to be in that situation again. I'm going to do the thing that I wish I did. And so I always do that. I take out my phone. I go to my Instagram like a total diva. And I just show her my Instagram. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. And she was like, oh, my God. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so, that is so great. Like, I didn't know. I just, I'm in the, and I'm like, okay, you know, soccer mom. So can I get back to my life? <laughs> And she like awkwardly runs away or something. But, you know, it's things like that. I call th I call things like that, you know, I'm a doctor syndrome mm -hmm. where yeah. you think you're a doctor and you can solve everyone else's problems. Um, there's other little fun, you know, terms that I've coined like handler syndrome, right? Where they talk to anybody but you. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Like, I have that handler syndrome. <laughs> I, well, like, I've been in an airport, right, by myself navigating. Mm -hmm. And like the airport staff went up to the person beside me and was like, does she need help? And that person was like, I don't know who she is, but I need help. <laughs> <laughs> and I just went on my merry way. I'm like, I got I'm good. Like, <laughs> So, so I'm blind and my brother is deaf. And so he drives me a lot of the places. And so if I go to the doctor, they always end up talking to him, which is the most hilarious thing oh, to me. I'm like, yeah, my brother is deaf. Why are you talking to him? <laughs> That's funny. That's a sitcom. Can I, can we, <laughs> I've already got this song. It's like, I am blind. My brother's deaf. And we get up to fun antics. Do you like it? Can I, can I brand that? <laughs> as long as I get a royalty. 
<laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> One royalty. Um, so <laughs> but it's it's it is it is very ridiculous. And honestly, I mean, this is why we do what we do, right? To kind of really bring mm-hmm. out the awareness of we're all human beings. Like if you if you all of a sudden went blind, would you want people to talk to everyone else except for you? No, you wouldn't want that. So yeah start paying it forward let's start building the world we want to see when we join the disability community absolutely and stop chasing us down the parking lot because this <laughs> happened to me and saying hey you you <laughs> hey you i'm like, <laughs> I'm like i have no idea who this person is talking to but it better not be me because i'm not a you first of all yes <laughs> girl thank you <laughs> And so uh, I like run away. I'm like, dude, stop following. I don't know. And you're creepy. Yeah, That's just a, a, no. If, if they were doing that to anybody else, like right. seriously. Then- yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm trying to figure out how I can whip my phone out and like be video recording some of these things faster because I am I need to go viral with a crazy recording. That's what I'm <laughs> That's my next life goal. <laughs> That is yeah. so funny. Oh, my goodness. Well, this has been such a pleasure. Is there anything else that you want to share with the audience? Oh, yes. OK, so I did want to mention that I am also above all of these uh, things that I do. Um, one thing that I also do on my spare time is write novels. Um, and I will be having a novel called Death Tango. It's a sci fi thriller uh, coming out in October 2nd. It will be coming out with a really dope audiobook as well. So um, please check it out. Death Tango by Lachi. If you like sci-fi, if you are into a little bit of horror, if you like whodunits, um, and if you like it smudged with a tinge of romance, um, and if you like characters that have all sorts of varying you know, disabilities that they need to sort of work with as they try to solve a murder, um, then this is for you. So I hope you check that out. I hope you check out um, Lift Me Up. And I generally hope that you come through the Lachi pages. Um, I am definitely very interactive online. So uh, just thank you for all of your support and for continuing to uplift disability culture. Thank you so much, Lachi. You're the queen. This has been amazing. Thank you, everybody. Go check out Lachi. All right. And see you guys in the next one. Lachi definitely has such a vivacious, lively personality. And it was really amazing to talk to her. And it was really neat to get a glimpse of the music industry, especially what as it relates to disabled artists. And I'll have links all over the description. And I really hope you enjoyed this interview. Thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you in the next video.